So I've said in the past that Texas has had success running the football this year, and they have. They rank number 11 in the country in line yards per carry, which is a calculation that gives 100% credit for all runs of 0 to 3 yards, plus 50% credit for runs between 4 and 8 yards. You don't get any credit for anything over 8 yards because that's a highlight opportunity. Credit is given to the running back. And you get 125% deduction for any lost yardage. So it's not exactly yards per carry. It's line yards per carry. They rank number 11 in that category. They also rank number 9 in the nation in stuff rate. So they are get zero or negative yards better than all but eight other teams in the nation. But they have had some problems. Namely, one of the biggest problems is they rely heavily on the inside zone. And I have Baylor's defense th uh, drawn up here, very similar to what Ohio State does. They run what we call a tight formation. And they have these four eye techniques at the end covering B gap. And then you have a stacked nose and middle linebacker taking the A gaps away. Baylor likes to play their Sam and Will if there's a slot receiver outside splitting the difference. I do want to point out, I have this drawn up in 10 personnel. You could run it with a tight end, but I want to talk about 10 personnel today. So this is what Iowa State did against Texas. It's what Baylor's going to do against Texas. And they've struggled with it in the inside zone. It's very difficult to block this in inside zone. Additionally, you'd love to run an RPO with a little slant out here, but Baylor, along with Iowa State, are going to play inside leverage. And Baylor's really going to press those wide receivers. They're going to have a hard time running a slant. So how are we going to fix that? I have a couple of adjustments for you. So the first adjustment we're going to make is we're going to invert this formation. So now we have the H, or Devin Duvernay, outside of the Z receiver, Brennan Eagles. And now Eagles can run his slant route just behind the wheel. You can read the wheel on that inside zone play. Duvernay will run a curl to occupy the cornerback. There's other adjustments that can be made if they move these cornerbacks and linebackers around, but that's for another post. The second adjustment I'm going to make is I'm going to combo block this nose, but as the guard, in this case Kerstetter, comes across, he's going to check this A-gap. If the nose comes into A-gap, the center will go up to the middle linebacker and the guard will take the nose. But assuming the nose does not slant into the A-gap, the center will take the nose, and we're going to fold this block to come up and get the Mike linebacker. That allows us to double team at the point of contact, read the will, and give based on what that will does. If he comes down and tries to play the run, we'll throw the slant. If he plays the pass, he's out of the play, and we'll run the ball. It looks something like this. And in motion, like this. So that's the inside zone against tight formation. Now here's some other adjustments. Texas has not been able to run the ball outside. And the reason why is because they're getting leakage, they're getting penetration right through these gaps when they take their scoop steps. So how do you fix that? First of all, you don't take a scoop step. You need to step upfield and engage the blockers. When you do that, it makes it very hard for instance, for this guard to reach this end, which is what he would normally do. So we're going to have to crack on the play side in order to run outside zone. That's exactly what we have here. I have Malcolm Epps running outside zone. He's going to crack the strong linebacker. We're going to double team this in to help Okafor and Kerstetter, who are both, well, Kerstetter's out of his position and Okafor's not the starter at his position get this combo block and then one of them is going to come up to the Mike linebacker. The center will block the nose and seal him. We're looking for this end of slant so we're going to step into into a gap with the backside guard and then he's coming up to the second level. If the wheel doesn't show he'll actually go to third level and try and do what we call a touchdown block. And then the backside tackle is going to scoop the end right here. Here's what it looks like in motion. So if you notice a couple things on this, 
on the back side we ran a post and a wheel and we have the crack here but we also have Colin Johnson right here and he's gonna run this cornerback off the cornerbacks impressed so he can't get inside to block the safety if this cornerback turns and runs that will leave the running back one-on-one -on -one with the safety Colin Johnson will just run the cornerback off if if he can't get inside if the cornerback comes down and tries to play the run Colin Johnson will come in take the safety block him and now the running back is one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback so he's really looking at what this cornerback is going to do and determining how he's going to block based on on that we really want him to block the safety but if the cornerback's not going to let him get inside he'll run the cornerback off and let the running back uh, deal with the safety so off of that the reason we're running this wheel post back side is because you can get the safeties flowing down hard on the run and when they do you can run a wheel post back side so I want the line to block exactly as if it looks like they're going to run outside zone that's what we're showing here Epps is going to inside release because when he blocks if this Sam linebacker steps up hard he's got an inside release so he can take him on if he tries to run more of a, this type of pattern that's not going to work the Sam linebacker will beat him to the point of attack and make the tackle so we want this to look just like inside zone so he's going to inside release and then he's going to come in and run a swim a, a seam route and we'll run a dagger concept which means Johnson is going to run a dig a dig and a seam is a dagger and as you see here it looks just like they they look when they're blocking then the running back whoever it is will run a flat and you have your post wheel backside the quarterback's gonna read this post wheel as he's faking the handoff if the safeties come down he'll go post to wheel if the wheels covered then he comes back this side inside out seam dig flat very simple reads for the quarterback easy to execute and he's the key is he's got to make this read on these two routes on the the backside routes he's reading this safety coming down he's doing that as he's making his fake he can't wait till after the fake to make those reads so here it is in motion you see the post and wheel and then the dagger and the flat play side another play that Tom Herman has used in his career mainly at Ohio State as offensive coordinator is veer and specifically the inverted veer here the quarterback is reading the end man on the line of scrimmage in this case it's this defensive end and the running back is running outside and the quarterback is gonna run inside into B gap he really needs to make it tied up against this double team we're gonna double team the point of attack block down with the tackle pull the backside guard he's looking at this Sam linebacker if the Sam linebacker stays outside he's actually gonna to go to the third level and block the safety the Sam linebacker tries to stay outside and cross the face of this receiver the receiver will latch on there seal him to the inside so if the running back gets the ball he can go outside if the Sam linebacker comes down inside, the pulling guard is going to kick him out. So we're down blocking on the safety, double team, and point of back, point of attack, cutting off the end. We're reading the play side end. If he comes down inside, Sam's going to give the ball. Running back gets outside. If the end stays outside or widens, Sam keeps the ball and hits it right up tight against that double team, and then plays off of his blocks at the second level there are a hundred different ways to run this play Tom Herman's run it many 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 different ways and that's not an exaggeration but for today we're just going to talk about a, a couple different wrinkles so here it is in motion with the end in a five technique and that's very important we'll get into that in a second so here we have it drawn up in the tight formation with this end in a four eye and we're still looking at running the veer but this presents a problem because the tackle cannot down block when the end is in a four eye and Baylor will play their ends in a five or in a four eye they will move them around so you have to have this installed if you're going to run it against a team that plays the multiple three four 
So in this situation, the tackle is going to make a stress call telling the backside guard that he is going to block the Sam linebacker. And in this scenario, he's going to outside release and try and widen this end so that Sam can make a good read on the end. And he's looking at the Sam linebacker. If the Sam linebacker tries to come inside, he's going to keep him from penetrating inside so he can't get to the quarterback. If he stays outside, he's going to go up to the safety and then the wide receiver will will crack on the Sam linebacker. We're still double teaming at the point of attack. The guard's going to pull around and get tied up against that double team and block, block the Mac, Mike linebacker. And we're going to block the end, still reading in man line on scrimmage. If he widens, Sam will get inside. He needs to hit this tight against this double team. He can't get too wide because then the end can make the play and then he's going to break off of his blocks. If the end stays inside, we're going to give it and get outside. And here's what So here's what it looks like in motion. Now off of this, you can run a lot of different run pass options. You can run some play action pass. We're not going to get into any of that right now, but there are a lot of different things you can do with this inverted veer look. I get into that right now. So lastly, what we can do out of this formation is we can run the jet sweep. This is another thing Tom Herman has done. He hasn't done a whole lot at Texas, but we're just, just like we blocked outside zone, we're going to double team the end here, come up to middle linebacker, crack here. Sorry for my artwork. The running back is going to lead block. He's looking at this cornerback. If the cornerback stays in to play the run, we'll kick him out. If the cornerback bails, he will just continue up to the safety motion. Right when he gets behind the tackle, you snap the ball. You give it to DuVernay. He's going to follow that running back right up. I don't want to say down the sideline. He's going to cut inside of that cornerback before he, he can make the tackle. Here's what it looks like in motion. Off of the jet sweep look, you can run a play action pass, and it's really difficult to defend because you have four receivers all on one side of the field. I do want to point out you're going to run a little quick slant back to the boundary so if this wheel linebacker blitzes, Sam has an outlet there. You're still going to have the jet sweep look, but you're going to run a post play side, still going to inside release, look like he's blocking. This running back's going to run out and look like he's blocking, but then he's going to run a wheel route. You're going to run the cornerback. You really want, Colin Johnson's trying to get this cornerback to pay attention to him so he can open up this wheel route. He wants his cornerback and the safety to be drawn to him. So he's going to try and sell a vertical release and then just come and settle in underneath. And then DuVernay, after he gets the fake, is going to run into the flat. So the quarterback, as he's faking the handoff, is going to read for these safeties coming down. If they come down in the post or the wheel is open, he can hit them quick as soon as he gets off the fake. Don't give them time to adjust. If not, he's going to look at this linebacker. If the linebacker tries to come underneath this, he's going to check down to the flat. If the linebacker runs to the flat, he's going to hit that curl. And here's what it looks like. Anyway, there you have it. We talked about a few adjustments that the Longhorns can make. You talked about inverting Duvernay and Eagles so Eagles can get a release off the line of scrimmage. You also cut down his split so he can run an out route in the RPO game if they try to play inside leverage on him. We talked about getting the ball outside, allowing uh, double teaming the end man on the line of scrimmage to allow the ball to get outside on the outside zone. We talked about running jet sweep, running veer, and then a few little play actions that you can try and get big plays off of that. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and hook them horns.